But before I get into the word, I just have like one or two quick announcements for you. Next weekend, we are doing an outreach here in San Francisco in the Tenderloin, um, in Russian Hill, and in North Beach. And we are giving out these wonderful packets. They're full of toiletries, socks, underwear, snacks. And for those of you who can't come on the outreach with us, but want to contribute to spreading the gospel, winning social Jesus, and blessing people on the streets, go to jamiebarrera.com, hit the donate button, and you can give there. And all your proceeds go to these wonderful packets that we're giving out and blessing people as we're winning souls for Jesus. Then we have I'm Saved Now What and Estoy Salvada Ahora Que. Both of them you can get on Amazon.com, but some of you guys had reached out about bulk copies for your churches and for your new believer packets. And you can get bulk copies for your new believer packets or your bookstores at HigginsPublishing.com. Okay, so those are my announcements, and we are getting into the Word of God now. So we are going to start in the Gospel of John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. This is the New Testament, and we're going to go to chapter 10, verse 3. So, Bible's out. All right. Let me situate myself real quick. Here we go. Okay. So, Gospel of John 10, 3. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes over ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him. <laughs> Because they do not recognize the stranger's voice. And then we're going to skip down to John 10, 27. All right. So, oh, I'm sorry. John 10, 25. Apologies. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you do not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testify about me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. The sheep that are my own hear my voice and listen to me. I know them and they follow me. Okay, so let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this word. Father, let it resonate in hearts and minds. Give them an ear to hear and a heart to receive in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so a requirement to hearing God's voice is you have to be a sheep. <laughs> That's so simple. <laughs> and Jesus is your shepherd. David says in Psalms 23, and a lot of you guys have heard this, the Lord is my shepherd and I lack nothing. So the Lord being your Lord and Savior and provider will supply all of your needs, including your health, including your finances, including your family, inclu including everything that you need to fulfill your kingdom purpose. Then there's the stranger's voice. And this is the voice that we've listened, we've opened our heart to listen to the wrong person and it has led us astray. So throughout the whole Bible, there was different dispensations of how God spoke. God spoke through the patriarchs um, in the Pentateuch, which is the first five books of the Bible. Then he spoke through the people of Israel who are under the law. And then in the New Testament, God spoke through the Gospels. And so this was um, different variations of how God's word or how people listened to the word of God in various different ways. And we'll go over that. And so the purpose of listening to God's voice, when God speaks, it's always referring to a present time. In the Old Testament, yes, there were prophecies, but he addressed what was going on 
in the right now time, in the present time. He, God would always remind people of what was said in the Old Testament, you know, of those who were speaking in the New Testament and things like that. But what in every situation in the Bible, he always talked about the now, what was happening now for either that individual or that region and how to open and listen and obey to the voice of God. And all of it was to build their faith because faith comes by hearing his voice. And so in order to hear his voice, we have to Um, we have to open our ears to hear. We have to open our spirits. We have to listen to him and be in obedience to him. So the purpose of listening to him is one, God always confirms his word and his voice with his purpose. So you will always find when you hear the voice of God, it will always lead to a kingdom purpose. Then also it's, it will counsel you. God's voice will always counsel you. It will warn you. It will correct you, but it will always be received in a personal level in a way that you're ready to receive it and in a way that you will understand it. So when God speaks to you, he'll speak to you in different ways for your kingdom purpose to guide you and lead you in the right direction and also on a personal level for your right now time and, you know, for you to push forward. And so, um, the, when you read through the Bible in the old Testament, you know, God always says, if, if you hearken to the voice of God, so the word if, I mean, this is a choice of you. He, he gives you an option. This is your choice if, right? So if you obey the voice of God, if you obey what God is speaking, he will provide blessings upon you, your health, your finances, your family, your generation, you know, that thing. He provides blessings. And then if you don't listen to the voice of God. It said, so this is Deuteronomy 28, right? And so if you don't listen to the voice of God, he talks about all the things that um, would happen when you don't listen to the voice of God, right? And so he tells you if you do, and if you don't, this is your choice. He always gives you a choice. And so, so that's that. So when we obey, it, he talks about the obedience of God. He talks about being in unity with him. He gives you moments to repent. He'll always warn you. He'll always tell you. He'll give you that still small voice, th- things like that. And so, and all of God's, whatever God says to you, it's to keep a covenant with him. It's to have that bond. It's So there's a distinction of his people because not only do they obey his voice, there's um there's things about them that are different from everybody else there's things about those who follow god that there's blessings upon them they have the favor of the lord their health you know their health is improved in different ways they have provision this is the distinction of god's sheep is because they followed what god had said they took his word and they obeyed his word. They took what God said and they did that. So one way of listening to God's word. So I I had one person ask me and they go, how do I hear God's word if he doesn't speak? And so I was like, that's a great question. If he doesn't speak or if you can't hear him, How do you listen to his voice if you don't hear him? So we're going to go over that. And, um, but when you hear someone's voice, there's a distinction of what's good and what's bad. God gives you intuition, right? He gives you that intuition to know right from wrong. He gives you that intuition to know what's good and what's bad. 
So that's one indication. And God says, test the spirit. It says in 1 John, this is separate from the Gospel of John. It's 1 John all the way in the back of the Bible, right before Revelation. So 1 John 4, 1, it says, Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God because many false prophets have gone out into the world. So there's many voices out there and we hear it a lot more and more in the news of many, many sides to different situations that who do you agree with? You know, the, and sometimes you don't agree with any of them. Sometimes you agree with all of them. All of them might have different things. But, like, whose voice are you listening to? That's the question. And when something happens, who are you running to? Are you running to people or are you running to the Word of God? Are you running to get alone with God to hear what God says? Or are you getting on the phone and calling whoever because you want to hear the voice of God from somebody else not directly from God so these are the questions that you have to ask yourself and really be attuned to how you listen to the voice of God or you're listening to a stranger that would possibly and most likely lead you in the wrong direction so if you're going to listen to God's voice you got to go to God <laughs> right and so and I see a lot of people, they post their Bible verses, and the one that I always see the most is, ask and you'll receive, right? And so, <laughs> and when I see that verse, I always wonder, is that, did they, yes, you posted the verse. Yes, you know it's a Bible verse. Maybe you don't know it's a Bible verse, but you posted it, you received it, but did you read the rest of that verse? Because, yes, you ask God and God answers you, but he answers you according to his will. So there's so many people that see Bible verses, but they don't listen to the word of God. They don't read the word. They, I like to call it the biblical horoscope because they see a verse and they're like, yay, that works for me, but they don't really follow it. They just kind of agree with it and then they post it and then they go, okay, yay, I did my good deed. No, I mean, yay, it resonated with you for that moment, but did it anchor itself into your spirit, into your soul? And so there's things of that nature where, yes, you're there, and but, you know, we have to go deeper. God wants you to read his word. He wants you to get alone with him. He wants you to, you know, to get into that comfort of trusting him and allowing him to be your Lord and Savior, not just for moments that feel good or seem right or things like that, right? And so we're trying to listen to the word of God and the ways that you can listen to him. Sometimes we're distracted. Sometimes we do, like we get alone with God, we open up our Bible, we're reading it, we're ready to go, and then something distracts us, whether it's like the TV or, you know, the ping on your phone or, you know, family members come into the room and ask you a million and one questions or whatever, you know what I mean? So sometimes we get distracted by just circumstance and elements, but then there's other things that distract us by where our heart is too. You know, you tried to get alone with God, but someone called you because they wanted to go out to dinner and go party. And you chose, instead of choosing alone time with God, you chose to go out and party or do whatever. I'm just using that example. There's nothing wrong with going and have fun. But if you dedicated and promised time to the Lord, follow through and have that time alone with God. There'll always be dinner. There'll always be, you know, whatever is entertaining to you. But... Your time alone with God is very precious and God reveals things to you in that alone time. And so there's different distractions that lure you away from receiving what God has for you. And then also is spirit to spirit. What connects you, right? And so you see people who are grouped together, right? Spirit-filled people are attracted to spirit-filled people and they usually 
you know, knit their hearts together, communicate, they run together, they, they agree, they understand each other on a whole different level. But people who are not spirit filled and are filled with an evil spirit are usually attracted to each other too. And so like gossipers is going to have a hard time sitting with someone who doesn't gossip at all. <laughs> They're going to get up off of that table and go to the table where they could talk about people and it's allowed, right? Same thing. A drug addict looks for a drug dealer. A drunkard goes to a bar. A sexually perverse person is going to look for someone to participate in their adultery, right? A Holy Ghost filled person and an evil spirited person are not going to want to hang out together very long because neither one of their spirits agree with each other. And if they do hang out, it's because one of their spirits are conforming to the other, right? And so that's, that's why God says, test the spirits. <laughs> We saw just recently um, a post from someone that said, yes, Jesus sat at the table with sinners, but he did not sin with them. And so that's a great reminder right there. Like, yes, he was in their presence, but he wasn't participating in their shenanigans. Right. And so God says, the word says, test the spirit. And so you have to test everything that comes your way because sometimes whoever's speaking to you they might be saying truth to you but where is that spirit coming from is this the holy spirit or is this from um someone who's trying to lead you astray although they might say something that might be factual but the holy spirit will always lead you in the right direction the holy spirit will always tell you truth and people, the doctors will say, you know, here's a fact, here's a scientific fact that you are sick, but God's saying, no, I'm going to heal you. So test the spirits. Okay. Second, we have to get in his presence. In Psalms 22, three, it says, God inhabits the praises of his people. It says, but thou art holy, O thou that inhabits the praises of Israel. God inhabits the praises of your people. So when we get alone with God, many churches, when they're into um, praise and worship, you can feel it, you you see it, you, you know God's presence is there. It changes you, it changes your heart, it changes your mood, it changes everything, right? And so... God inhabits the praises and his inhabitants in your presence, in his presence, it is a different atmosphere. It's a totally different atmosphere. You feel it, you know it, there's, you can feel his glory, you know, there's change in you. Some people have received miracles in his presence. Some people have um, had revelation in his presence. So being in his presence is um, feel his glory. That's where his glory will come in. He'll give you revelation. You'll hear the word of God. You'll see it. You'll know all of those things. So there's different ways of doing that, but it's in the praises of his people. So his people will always edify. His people will always give the highest praise, will will exalt him, will exalt God in the most beautiful way and God recognizes it and his presence will be in there and you know it and you feel it and it'll be all of those things. So the different ways that you can hear from God, the first one is, and this is by the word of God, right? And so in John 1, 14, it says, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father, full of grace and truth. So God's word will always speak the truth from Genesis, <laughs> from Genesis to Revelation 
everything in here is God's truth. It's God's word. It speaks. And a lot of times what I have done in the past is that when I really needed to build my faith, when I really needed to hear the word of God, I read his word and I read it out loud. It says faith comes by hearing. So when I needed to build my faith, when I needed to hear the word of God, I read his word and I read it out loud. And so, but in order to hear his word, you have to know the word. You have to have it anchored into your spirit and into your soul. In John 1, 1, it says, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. And he was with God in the beginning, meaning Jesus. So Jesus original name before it was Jesus, before it was Emmanuel, his name was the word, the word from the very beginning and is now. And so in order for us to hear the word of God, to hear God's voice, we have to know the word and we have to read it. And if it helps you, because it's helped me, read it out loud. Because faith comes by hearing, hearing of the word, the word of God. Who is the word? It is Jesus. The word became flesh. What's Jesus' other name? The word. All right. So another way to hear God's voice is audibly. In 1 Kings 19.12, Elijah, um, he he had witnessed all of these natural disasters. There was a mighty wind, like a tornado. Mountains were falling. Then there was an earthquake and a fire. But he said God wasn't in any of these natural disasters. Elijah heard a still small voice. Also, there is in in Job, God heard, God spoke through thunder, right? In Job, he was talking about how he hears his voice like thunder. And then in Samuel 3.10, God was actually calling his name. He called his name Samuel, Samuel. And he said, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel responded in, in those ways. So people have heard God's audible voice. Um, and even today, some people have heard God's audible voice. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God does not change. And so how he spoke then, he does still speak the same way now. And so some people who have an ear to hear and who have been attuned to God in, in a certain way have heard God's audible voice. And so that still happens. Another way that we um, hear God's voice is through dreams and visions. And with dreams and visions, it's very unique because a lot of times it comes in symbols or in ways that um, are broken down and in ways that like we understand and we have to interpret it for others to understand. So sometimes people have dreams, some people have visions and it comes in a certain way. And if they don't understand like the symbols and understanding, like if God shows you, for instance, an apple and for some people, an apple in their mind might be a red apple. It, but in the dream, it was a Granny Smith apple. And so you have, you know what I'm saying? So it's when you're interpreting it and when you see certain symbols and dreams and visions, when God shows you these things, you know, for me, I always go to the word. If I see a tree, I'm like, okay, what kind of tree is it? And I, and I go and I search the kind, and then I look in the word and I'm like, okay, what's the tree? You know, that kind of thing. And so he'll show me a bush. What is the, what does it say in the word of God about a bush? It talks about the mustard seed and, and you know, the mustard seed, it turns into a big bush. He's talking about the faith, right? And so there's different ways and dreams that 
God reveals through like symbols, numbers, people, you know, he shows you different things in dreams that might make sense to to you but when you interpret the dream it comes out a little bit different like in Daniel when when God revealed the dream that the king had he was talking about all the different symbols of bronze and iron and and all of those things meant something um and so God revealed the mysteries in a night vision to Daniel also <laughs> Um, Abimelech had a dream not to marry Sarah. Um, God talked to him in the dream and said, don't marry that woman because she's already married. <laughs> so he tells you stuff in dreams of warnings and corrections. Um, also, you know, many people know about Joseph and he had a dream that he was one day going to rule and his brothers and his dad and everybody just did not like to hear that dream because they thought he was conceited and all that stuff. And he spoke really he was young and he was too soon. He didn't really, you know, sometimes there's things that God's like, wait a minute, I'm telling you this, but you know, maybe, maybe don't share it with certain people because, they're not going to like what you have to say. And so um, when Joseph was telling them the dream, they, you know, his brothers and his dad, you know, everybody, his family got mad at him. And he, you know, and they're all like, well, don't we all have dreams? We all have dreams, too. And Joseph's like, yeah, well, we both have dreams, but the only one who can interpret it is from God. So, <laughs> um so that's another way. So dreams and visions, sometimes they're dreams, sometimes they're visions, you know, actual visions while you're awake. And so God will speak through either dreams and visions. A lot of times it's through symbolism. A lot of times there are warnings or, you know, counsel or, you know, he'll, but either way, it's all going to lead you in the right direction. So however God speaks to you, it's for a kingdom purpose. The fourth way that God speaks is through prophets, tongues, and interpretations. And these are for the believers of God. And the fifth way that God speaks is through signs and wonders. And so signs, wonders, and miracles are for the unbeliever. The prophets speaking in tongues and interpretations, um, those are gifts for the believer. So God will speak through prophets. He'll speak in, he'll speak to you and give you revelation um, when you're in your heavenly language and he'll give you interpretations for um, the mysteries that are spoken through your holy language, which is called tongues, or he'll give you interpretations for prophecies that were given all of it will all align with the word of God. So whatever you hear, whatever, you know, when you go back and you read it, God will confirm it by his word. So God will always give a confirmation. So in the confirmation, you'll always find it in the word of God, right? And so, and then there's signs and wonders. There's many healings or you know, God gives all these different signs. There's things that you're like in awe about. You're like, wow, that's so amazing, you know, that kind of thing. And um, and so it, it will be different for everybody. But so signs and wonders, unbeliever, prophets, tongues, and interpretations, those are for the believers. So he speaks in those different ways. Then there's the Holy Spirit, right? And so um, God says in his word, he, you know, Jesus said right before he ascended into heaven after the resurrection, he said, but I'll give you an advocate, which is also a helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the father will send in my name. And I will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have said to you. So not only is he going to remind you of the word of God, but he's also going to teach you how to operate in it. He's going to teach you how to talk to people. He's going to teach you all of these different things. So, um, and he's a helper. So when you need help in any of these situations, when you ask God, when you, you have the Holy Spirit in you, the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. So he's there and you have access to him. And so 
God, you know, Jesus is your advocate. He's sitting at the right hand of God. He's praying for you. He's rooting for you. He's like, yeah, this person is doing such a good job. You have the Holy Spirit helping you, guiding you, leading you. And all of this is because you listened to his word. You followed the Holy Spirit. You followed his guiding and his leading. God will always lead you. He will never pressure you. He'll always give you a choice. And it is your choice to follow the voice of God, to follow the words that are being spoken from God, right? And so God will also send people to you. Sometimes it's your pastor. Sometimes it's someone who like is maybe a spiritual parent to you. They'll speak to you and, and that's great. But sometimes God will speak to you from people who you don't want to receive from. But if you're open and you and you know God's spirit, you that's what he says, test the spirits, right? And you know it's God's spirit and you will receive the word of God. So in Mark 6, 7, he called the 12 and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. So you have people who come into your life or even you yourself, you go into somebody else's um, like God sent you. It's not a coincidence. You know, there's been a couple of times like you'll think about somebody. It's not a coincidence. It was a divine appointment for you to speak life into that person. So God will put these divine appointments for somebody to run into you or vice versa. God sends people. It's always for a kingdom purpose. They will speak something to you. It will either resonate or not resonate, testing the spirits, exactly. And, um, you know, and they will speak into your life. God's sending you to go speak into someone's life to say blessings over them. Then God also speaks through angels. <laughs> so, yes. There are angels and they are there for you. God sends angels. So God sent an angel to speak to Mary and Mary and Elizabeth and told them they were both having sons. And one was Jesus, one was John, right? And so there was an angel of the Lord, stopped them in the track, said, hey, guess what? You're both pregnant. Surprise. And so, <laughs> and, um, and then even in Numbers 22 28 there was an angel that caused a donkey to stop and then he even spoke there are angels there's ministering angels there's guardian angels there's angels who war for you and there's worshiping angels there's angels that sing there's all these different angels and so when you're praying you know you can ask God to send the angels before you and make a clear path in a clear way to have the angels you know come with their fiery swords from heaven and make a hedge of protection around you there's angels that are on your side there are angels there to protect you. God also speaks through nature. He is the God who answers by fire. There was fire coming out of Mount Sinai and Moses was talking and there was fire in a fiery bush. There was all these things where God was speaking through fire, right? He also speaks in a thundering voice. It was a voice of thunder and lightning and plagues of judgment were numerous, right? There was rain, there was hail, there was fire, he had frogs, he had locusts. There was all of these things that happen because of judgment and disobedience, right? So there was those elements. There was a fish that brought Jonah to Nineveh. There was um, a cloud by day, fire by night. He rained manna from heaven. He brought quail. You know, there was oil that was like never ending into these jars, being scorching hot and all the plants dried up. But then he also brought the rain and made the plants grow, you know. So God answers through the elements of nature, right? He is the all creating God. He created the world. So he answers through there. And so there's all these different ways that we can hear the voice of God and we just have to be in tune to the spirit of God to understand how God is speaking in those moments, whether it's in the word, whether it's through a prophet, whether it's a dream or vision, through angels, through all of these things, God's voice speaks still today. And for those people who were wondering 
how do I hear God's voice if I don't hear him audibly, but you can hear him through the word and he speaks through you when it comes out of your mouth. So when you speak the word of God, when you read it out loud, you're hearing the word of God, you're hearing his voice and it's speaking to you in all these various different ways. And when God answers, when God speaks, it's always practical. It's always in order. There's no confusion there. God is not a God of confusion. He is a God of order. So it's always gonna be practical and it's easy to understand. It's always gonna be in order. God is persistent because there's many times where God has probably told you something and you didn't do it and you feel it in your heart like, oh man, I should have did that. Oh man, you know what? Let me just go ahead and go do whatever it is that God told me to do. God's like, I need you to pray and he will wake you up. And at three o'clock in the morning, if you didn't pray at noon when he told you to, he's going to wake you up at three in the morning. God will always be persistent and keep telling you and keep warning you. And then he will always confirm it by his word. So everything that God says, and, you know, and God doesn't get mad at you if you ask him, like, can you please confirm this, Lord? Like, this is what I'm sensing. This is what I feel. This is what I hear. Can you confirm it by your word? And God will always confirm it by his word. He will always give you a confirmation. So this is your questions. How do I hear God's voice? This is how you hear God's voice. I hope it blessed you. And I pray that it was transforming for you and that you will go and spend alone time with God and listen to his voice. Have a good evening and see you next time.